Okay, this is much, much, much more intimidating than last time I spoke here, and I kept telling myself it's not gonna be that bad. They make it look so easy. Ooh, it's really bad. All right, <laughs> let's, let's do this, shall we? So I'm sure you all are wondering what is with the small child on the stage with the oxygen, and I'm going to explain all of that to you, I promise, my illness, my story. Uh, and actually, in the beginning, I had a lot more time to do all of that, and I was gonna add on some more, but I kind of want you all to listen to my story in a different way than most people do, because when I tell my story, most of the time, it's a, I'm so sorry you went through that, you know, what can I do to help you, all of that, right? But I kind of want you all to look at my story in a different way, um, a way of impacting the world, and a way of using these challenges, or these problems that we have as amazing opportunities, because so many people forget to do that. Now, everyone who has spoken here, I am just amazed and so excited to be in a room with people who are so passionate about what they do, but I realize that not everyone is. You know, the world is not as passionate anymore, and I think, I think, after countless hours of lying in bed and thinking about this, that the reason is because we've forgotten that these issues in our life aren't really issues at all. They are stepping stools to awesomeness in teenager terms. Um, but really, they are these gateways to amazing possibility, and we've kind of forgotten about that. So. Without further ado, here's my magical story. So my name is Claire Wineland, I am 15 years old, uh, and I have cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic disease that affects around, sorry, my earring is bumping on the thing, so we're just gonna forget about that thumping sound, um, but that affects around 30,000 Americans alone. And very few people know what CF is, I mean, I'm sure the doctors in here do, but very few of you, I'm sure, know what CF is. And I've had it since birth, so everything that I've been through, every moment, every triumph, every obstacle, in my life, CF has been there with me. And though there is a part of me, yes, that wishes I was normal by regular society standards, there is an even bigger part of me that loves to share with the world what being abnormal and being different has taught me. Because it has taught me so, so much. And I love to see when people realize that their problems can teach them just as much. And I love to see that in people. And so that's pretty much why I'm here. Now, growing up with CF was actually not as challenging as people would think it was. I've spent around 30% of my life in the hospital. I've had around 25 surgeries. I do breathing treatments four times a day. I take pills. I do all that fun stuff. And growing up with it wasn't actually that challenging. Of course, I didn't always want to do treatments. But I didn't let that slow me down because CF has always forced me to live in the moment and has always forced me to move forward with life. Like the doctor said before, you kind of just got to jump, especially when you never know how close death is or the end is. And for me, I, I'm at a unique spot to tell you all that death is actually not a scary thing. The scary thing is living life without a passion and then realizing at the very last moment that it's over and you haven't done what you wanted to do and that you're not proud of your life, that is much more terrifying. Now, I have my own story about my kind of near-death experience, you could say. Around two years ago, I went in for routine surgery. And I love to say routine surgery, because before I was like, <laughs> okay, she goes through surgeries a lot, apparently. My, she's my weekly surgery. Um, and uh, so I went in and didn't go as planned. I got blood sepsis, which put me in a coma. That's kind of the order of operations here. It put me in a coma. And uh, then my lungs started to fail more dramatically, so they put me on a ventilator. That didn't work, so they put me on an oscillator, which is a very, very high-powered ventilator. Um, and I was in a coma for around three weeks, and it took me around three months to be rehabilitated and back to where I am now. And it's interesting, so many people can argue, and believe me, many, many have, that those three weeks should have been the most challenging weeks for my life, or for my family's life, but those three weeks were incredible. And though they were scary, yes, we had around 50 people come out to the parent waiting room, which we then called Claire's Corner. Um, and then we had people down in the cafeteria that prayed. And people that I met along my life kind of come out of the woodworks for that. And I remember when I was under, I felt this sense that everything will be okay in the end. 
And that's corny, and I know everyone says it, but I feel like you all need to hear that because I know you all are here for different reasons. Maybe it's business, maybe it's to be inspired, maybe a friend dragged you along to this event. Uh, like my lovely friend Alicia, I dragged her, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I think everyone wants to be inspired. Everyone wants to be passionate. Everyone wants to know that in the end, it will be okay. And in the end, everything will work out. And I can tell you, as a guarantee, that the way to do that is to be passionate about life. And I'm, everyone here has said that, and, I, and everyone here has been passionate and given you examples of ways to do it. But I feel like when we're gonna leave here, we're gonna be so pumped up, right? And then we're gonna go home and then it's slowly gonna be life is gonna sink back in. Because that's how it always works, right? Then life comes back in and then you get a little frantic and then you forget about this feeling of passion and you forget about this excitement. It happens to me too, which is bizarre considering I have like a constant reminder attached to my face. But, <laughs> but the reason we do that is because we forget that life, in fact, in itself, you know, everyone talks about how life isn't fair, life has so many challenges. Okay, well, what did I say before? Challenges are these gateways. So, in fact, life in itself is this pathway to living an amazing, proud, and fulfilling life. Isn't that awesome? You don't have to do anything. You just have to look at these challenges that you see other people go through, that you go through, and turn them into a drive. Turn them into a passion. Turn them into something inspirational. I did that when I, come out, when I came out of my coma. Me and my family started a foundation to help other kids with cystic fibrosis. And other families with cystic fibrosis thrive. Not just live, not just be okay with life, but actually thrive with CF. And my mother is now handling the business part of that because I am way too young to know what any of that means. Um, <laughs> you know? So, but what I get to do is I get to be an inspiration behind it. And that is such an honor because I see kids with CF, teenagers especially, who feel like, like CF was given to them and now they have no hope for a normal life. No, no, you don't have hope for a normal life. You have hope for an incredible life. You're the, CF has given me so many opportunities that I never, ever could have dreamed of. And when people like, I think I've even had arguments with people before about how I'm actually happy. Someone came to my hospital room when I was like nine and I had decked out the whole room as like an art studio. And uh, I was doing pottery and the guy's like, I, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I was like, I was, I'm just puttering away. Uh, and he's like, no, no, I'm really so sorry. I'm like, no, I'm really not. And we got in a full-on fight. I was like, I am not sorry about my life. Like, really, I have no, I have so few regrets. And how is that possible that someone with a terrible, life-threatening illness can have so few regrets? Let me stop my earring there. It's because I'm not stuck in this belief that challenges are given to us to hold us back. I am lifted up by a belief that challenges are here to help us move forwards. And that is the difference. That is the only difference between people who are living a passionate and proud life and people who feel sad or people who get older and feel like they don't know what they're doing anymore. That is the only difference. And I'm sure all of you have challenges, things that you wish you could overcome or wish you could get over. Stop. Stop trying to get over it, because if we're trying to get over everything that we, all the problems in our life, our entire lifetime is just going to be trying to get over problems. That's all there's going to be. And that is not a life to be proud of. So instead, find these challenges in your life and use them, you know? Find people who are sick and maybe help that drive you to open up new worlds for those people with that illness. You know, I mean, even the talk that we saw before about the man who created the glasses because of this thing, he used a challenge and he turned it into this opportunity. And that's all you got to do, and it's that simple. And I am so honored to be here and honored to be speaking for you guys and to be able to inspire people. And it's not always me that inspires. I think I was given CF so that people could hear me. I'm kind of like a moving, walking slap in the face for people. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so it, 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 which, is, which is kind of awesome. I've kind of accepted that. It's a lot of weight on my shoulder, but I've kind of accepted that. 
Um, because, yes, CF can kill you, and yes, it has. I've had friends who have passed away of CF who are younger than me. But guess what? We could all be hit by an asteroid in five seconds. <laughs> it, and, and if that happened, could you look back on your life and say that you are proud of what you did and that you didn't spend your whole life trying to overcome things? Can you do that? Because very few people can. And if you can, then rock on and go inspire other people. <laughs> That's what this is all about. That's what TED is all about, is in sharing this opportunity for passion with others. Because really, we are here to touch people, and I've said this before. We are here to make an impact in people's lives. So thank you very much. Woo!